TCO Optimizer is used by CoreLogic's customers to drive cost savings of on average between 40 and 70%. So huge, huge cost savings. The way it works is you define policies. A policy will simply say that this data for this severity, a log severity, or for this application or this subsystem, we should allocate a certain use case to it. So let's go into what those use cases are and common um, examples of when those use cases are utilized by our customers. Here you can see the high or frequent search use case. These are for the logs that you really need to see the logs themselves and you need to be able to query them very, very often, very, very frequently. It's very powerful. And what it means is that it's very, very common to put the error and the warning logs in this level so that you can see them yourself straight away. Uh, high and frequent search logs have access to all of the features on the CoreLogix platform. Um, so you'll pay the full ingestion cost for this. The medium or monitoring uh, level use case is all about logs that simply drive your data and understanding. So for example, they train machine learning models that you've got in the platform. They uh, can trigger alarms. They can um, be converted into metrics. They can be enriched and parsed and so on. Um, but what you can't do is query those logs in the frequent search in the explore screen. So they won't be visible in the explore screen. However, what you can do is you can store them in an S3 archive and then you can query them from the archive screen. So media monitoring, very, very common use case is when you have logs that have some useful metrics in them, but the whole log isn't necessary. And what you can do is you can ingest the log at the monitoring tier, which offers a 60% discount already. Um, it will, you can take out certain fields that are in those logs, convert those into time series metrics, hold on to them for by default a year, but you can hold on to them for longer if you need to. And you can archive the original log or you can delete it if you want. And what this means is that you can keep just the information you need and drop the information you don't need. So you can retain the data for longer and you can drive 60% uh, ingestion cost savings. So massive, massive cost savings potentially here. Finally, low or compliance level logs. So a very common use case for this is audit logs, so you can understand how people are operating in your system, or debug and trace level logs that you wish to keep, uh, but you're not 100% certain that they, uh, they will be queried very often. What happens with compliance level logs is they are pushed straight to your archive. Now you can still query them in your archive uh, via the explore screen in archive mode, but again, they will not be visible in the frequent search mode in the explore screen. So it's just something to keep in mind here. Generally speaking, um, the way we split this is um, that you will uh, think about your most most crucial important logs, especially those error logs when something's really, really wrong. They may be your high and frequent search. Your data where there's something useful in there, but um, not necessarily uh, like not necessarily the whole thing is useful. We want to keep parts of it. That's monitoring. And for compliance, it's the logs that you simply need to hold on to for regulatory reasons or for audit reasons or for long-term historical reporting reasons. And remember, for high and uh, uh, for frequent search and for monitoring, the logs can still be routed to eventually to the archive if you need to. So these, these things aren't mutually exclusive. You're kind of just deciding which of the feature set that you really need. So investigate each of the features that are available in, in these use cases, and that will give you some idea of uh, what you can do with the data and where your data fits in. So let's have a look at defining a policy. Defining a policy is really, really straightforward. You just click down here, add new policy. That'll bring up a little modal here. And you can see that you can define a policy name, for example, my policy. Now you can define uh, a policy that applies to all applications and subsystems and uh, select a severity, or you can zone in on a subsystem and application. So for example, you can say is, and when you select is, you'll see a list of all your available uh, applications here. Likewise, if you select is here, you'll see all of your subsystems. I'll stick this to all for now. Now there's some real powerful things you can do here. For example, you could say, all debug and verbose logs immediately go to the uh, archive. So if you think about how many debug and verbose logs are floating around your system, setting these broad, wide policies is really, really, really very powerful because you can drive enormous cost savings almost immediately. But then you wonder, well, what if some applications need, uh, we need to ingest those debug and um, trace level uh, logs for different reasons. For example, some of the applications are just really, really important. So what you can do is you can actually define an override right here. And what an override will do is um, it will allow you to um, specify a certain use case so you can override certain blanket policies. And what this allows you to do is you can fine tune the way that data is being passed around. So for example, with this override, you can see that um, the majority of the data is going to debug and then some of it is, uh, is, is info. 
and th this this shows you the severity input that's going to be affected by this policy override and then you can define what the priority is going to be set to so even though that most of these logs here are debug level and we have a policy above that says block debug level logs or archive debug level logs you can say that we're setting the policy to high so what this means is that you set a broad blanket policy up here and then you can override certain features of it using the policy override this is really really powerful uh, because it means that you can um, you can drive those massive cost savings, but you still have the ability to fine tune it when you have specific applications and specific needs that you need to uh, solve. So we've looked at this. Um, let's have a quick look at tag retention. So once you decide to uh, you set up an archive and you decide to implement all of that, what you then need to do is think about um, how you can set up tag retention. So the way tag retention works is that you um, you can add tags to your data. So what this will do, for example, um, is you can say, for example, that your, your, your data needs to be held in the archive for a short period of time, for example, um, a week. Um, what you can do in CoreLogix is you can say, okay, um, for, the, for this data, I want to tag it with the short tag or the intermediate tag or the long tag in this case. And you can set custom values as you wish. Now, this will not do the data retention. This will not do the lifecycle management inside the S3 bucket for you. You still need to do that. But if you still want to do that, you can click this link right here. And this will open up um, the uh, archive retention policy, which will show you uh, how to configure all of these different uh, features. But essentially, in the CoreLogic side, what you do is you label your data. And on the S3 bucket side is where you actually handle the lifecycle management. This is great because it means that you can fine tune what you need. But on the CoreLogic side, you're simply labeling. Um, finally, um, we'll just have a quick look at usage dashboards. So usage dashboards are a really, really powerful way of actually visualizing how you're using your data, um, how it's being rendered and such. So the way you do that is you can um, go into here, go into settings for your team, and then you go into data usage. So what this will do is it will show you um, the amount of units that you're using, um, your allocated units, the quota that you've saved, it will give you really, really good insights into how you're actually utilizing the units for which you've paid in CoreLogix. And again, really, really powerful. This is all about cost transparency. So if you can see a big, big disparity between um, the amount of data that's been sent, the units that you're using, and the maximum uh, quota that you're allowed, then you might want to work on that and optimize how you're sending your data, send less data, send more data, and so on. So these are just a collection of features that all work really nicely together to create transparent costs as well as uh, create levers that customers can pull to optimize their costs and get the most out of the units they bought in CoreLogix. Thank you.